can you give me the main points about the matrix of control? How does Israel control? Well, uh, you know, the matrix of control is within this concept that Israel wants to keep... Israel has never accepted the idea of occupation. It rejects the idea that there's an occupation. It sees what we would call the occupied territories, the West Bank, East Jerusalem, Gaza, as integral parts of Israel. The West Bank being called Judea and Samaria. So they don't use the word West Bank in Israel. So the idea is that this is a part of our country. And we're in a process, Zionism is in a process of reclaiming the entire land of Israel for the Jewish people. Uh, and therefore, um, it isn't an idea that there's an occupation that's temporary and will negotiate and Palestinians will get it back. No, the idea is that this is our country and therefore our control and not, and is forever. This is a permanent, it's not just control, it's incorporation of, of the West Bank of Judea and Samaria into Israel proper. So the matrix of control, which is Israel's system uh, of control, is a permanent one. It isn't meant to be for five years or ten years or until negotiations. It isn't meant to control areas and then Palestinians get them back. It's meant to control the entire area leading into permanent uh, control. Whether or not the Palestinians get a little Bantu stand, a couple islands here and there as a state, is irrelevant because it would still be encircled by Israel, encompassed by Israel, controlled by Israel. So the basic control, then, is this permanent system, both of control and of pacification of the Palestinians. Because the idea is that we're going to be controlling these millions of Palestinians forever. And uh, ideally, in, the, in this conception, they'll leave. Or most of them will leave, because they'll just understand that they're living within our country. But if not, they'll be controlled. And just like the, the, what we call the Israeli Arabs. There's a million and a half Palestinians living inside Israel with Israeli citizenship, but by law they're, 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 they're excluded from 93% of the land of their own country, the land of Israel, and of the land of the state of Israel, it, which is reserved exclusively for Jews. So we've already done that. We have a million and a half Palestinians who are citizens of Israel, but, but their citizenship is meaningless. It doesn't give them... Uh, inclusiveness in the country, it doesn't give them uh, the right to live on, most of, on almost all the land of the country, they're confined to little tiny islands, and, uh, and the same would be true of the Palestinians of Judea and Samaria and East Jerusalem. They might be there, and they might even have a little Bantustan apartheid mini-state of their own if, if they want, but, but it, Israel will not give up control. So that the matrix then works on on different levels. One is, of course, the military level, because behind everything there's the iron fist, as Israel calls it. And that is that, you know, the army is working 24 hours a day, and they're arresting people, and there's once in a while there's outbreaks, and they're quelled, and uh, the army has camps, and the army, you know, it, it's a military occupation. But Israel's trying to hide that, you see, and, and, and better than using soldiers, if you can enmesh all the Palestinians in a kind of a legal system, a system of administrative controls that, uh, that's in a way self-regulating, that you don't need the army to do it. And therefore Israel uses administration. Uh, for example, um, um, uh, you know, Palestinians, uh, uh, you know, trying to get permission to leave the country or not leave the country or go to school or get a driver's license or Whatever you need, it always has a condition attached to it. You have to behave well. And if you're in the computer as a troublemaker, you're not going to get a driver's license. You're not going to get a permit to work inside Israel. Uh, you're not, your, your kids aren't going to be allowed to go abroad to study. In other words, there's a whole Kafka-esque administrative system that you're a part of. And in addition to that, there's zoning and planning, you know, it, it, so that the entire... West Bank and East Jerusalem has been zoned as either agricultural land or open green space, which means Palestinians might own land, but they're not allowed to build. Um, uh, so I'm the head of the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions. So over the last uh, 
43 years of occupation since 1967, Israel's demolished about 24,000 Palestinian homes in the occupied territories. Now, in addition, again, they've demolished thousands of more homes inside Israel of Palestinians and Bedouins, you know, in other words, of, of Arab populations. And matter of fact, last year, uh, in, well, in 2008, we'll take out Gaza for a minute, but in 2008, the Israeli government demolished three times more houses of Arabs who are Israeli citizens than they did of Palestinians in the occupied territories. So this whole matrix of control is countrywide, from Tel Aviv to Jericho. It isn't just a matter of the occupied, because it's the same concept, that this is all our country, and we have to pacify this Arab population. So on all kinds of levels, on the military, the administrative, on the level of planning and zoning, and then on the legal level. And that this is where it succeeds. If you go to the military courts, for example, we have what's called the civil administration, because it's also linguistic. In other words, uh, you call your military government, in an Orwellian way, a civil administration, as if to give the impression that this is just normal administration. Well, within the civil administration, you have military courts. So if you built your house illegally, on your own land, because Israel won't give you a building permit, and you have to live somewhere, this is two generations already since the occupation began, you have to build. So you end up building, and you get a fine, and you, your house can be demolished again. So what you do, you get a lawyer, right? And you go to the military court. So if you go any day to Beit El, which is the settlement in which the offices of the civil administration are, it's packed with Palestinians and their lawyers, all coming to pay their fines, to plead for lesser fines, to get, to get tried, to get sentenced, to get... In other words, this is how it works. Instead of the Palestinians saying, we're boycotting all of this, we're not going to participate, they participate, they're sucked into it all. So, so if Palestinians are going to come with their lawyers to your military courts and accept fines and punishments and demolitions and arrests and everything else, then you don't need the army.